Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite radical expression. We'll also talk about some generalizations for these kinds of problems and, and different variations of this problem. So we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, so on and so forth. Hopefully you get the idea. 3 and 2 alternates and they're all being multiplied. So we have an infinite radical expression. Does it have a finite answer? Good question. So it's about convergence. And let me tell you, this expression converges. We're not going to get into the proof, but I'll just tell you, hopefully you trust me on that one. So how do we solve or evaluate something like this? Of course, this needs to be well-defined, right? You can kind of define a sequence like a sub 1 equals this, and then a sub 2 depends on a sub 1, a sub n depends on a sub n minus 1, so on and so forth. But we're not going to get into any of those rigorous discussions. I'll keep it very, very casual. I hope you don't mind. So to be able to evaluate this expression, oh, I forgot to say, at the end, we're going to look at Wolfram Alpha's response. So what do you think Wolfram Alpha will give us at the end? Make a guess and let's check it out at the end. So to be able to evaluate an infinite expression, whether it's a plus sign, minus sign, division sign, whatever sign, it doesn't matter. We kind of usually set the whole expression equal to something. And that's usually a variable. So let's say we have this expression, right? So something like this. And we're going to go ahead and set it equal to x. Okay? Cool. Now, once we set it equal to x, an interesting thing happens. Because this expression actually contains itself infinitely many times. What is that supposed to mean? If you look at this expression carefully, you're going to realize that the part that starts here is the same as the original. Which means, if we set the whole thing equal to x, then this part will also be x. That's also an infinite radical. Just be careful about that. Because you cannot set an infinite radical equal to a finite radical, right? I mean, in most cases. So what do we do next? We write the result, okay? Because now we should have a finite expression. So it's going to look like this. Square root of 3 times the square root of 2. And then notice that everything else is x as a huge, huge product. So we're going to write it like this. And then, of course, the whole thing is equal to x. That's where the inner x comes from. Make sense? Now, the next thing we're going to do is not super surprising. We're going to square both sides. Of course, we have a radical and we're going to square it. That takes care of the outer radical, which is 3 times the square root of 2x. And that becomes x squared. Notice that nothing happens inside the radical because this squaring only strips out or takes away the outermost radical. Make sense? Now we're going to go ahead and square both sides one more time. And that's a product. So 3 squared is 9. And this will be multiplied by 2x. That's how you square it. And x squared squared is x to the fourth power because 2 times 2 equals 4. Okay? Don't get it wrong, it's not 2 squared, it's 2 times 2, which is the same thing, but it's a product. Great, so we got an equation, how do we solve it, right? So here's how we can solve it. First of all, let's write the x to the fourth first, and then the second part next, 18x. Hmm. I could probably divide both sides by x, but let's not do it. We don't want to lose any solutions, so we want to get the full picture. Let's go ahead and subtract 18x from both sides and then factor out x. Awesome. That gives us x cubed minus 18 equals 0. And from here we get two solutions. What are they? They are 0 and cube root of 18. If you set x cubed equals to 18, you get x equals cube root of 18. We're looking for a positive answer. We're looking for a real solution. And they are both real. 
Well, wait a minute. We started off with something like this. And as you can see, if we define a sequence like a sub n, the first term would probably be this one, right? And the second term would be this one. You have to take care of both the three and the two because they alternate. So you kind of have to include both. Otherwise you can't really define it, right? Probably not. So notice that a sub one is positive, can't be zero. And a sub two is greater than that. Why? Because the two here is multiplied by something greater than one and everything else is the same. So a sub two is greater than a sub one. You can definitely prove it in the general case, but notice that this is an increasing sequence. But does that mean it converges? No, it could diverge, but this one doesn't. So what does that mean? That means x equals zero is not acceptable, which means we're going to go with the cube root of 18. So the whole thing is equal to cube root of 18. A finite expression turned into I mean, an infinite expression turned into a finite answer. How nice is that, right? If you wanted to sh a shortcut for this, I can definitely give you a shortcut. If you think about it, 18 comes from 9 times 2. So this number is squared and then multiply by this number. And we put a cube root on the outside. Why cube root? That's just a rule, okay? Well, the reason being you square uh, the x squared and then divide by x, that's why. But this is always gonna work. So imagine if you had something like this, square root of a times the square root of b times the square root of a times the square root of b. You could even test it where a and b are equal to each other, it should work. But this should be in general, if I'm not mistaken, would be a, squared b and the cube root of that. Make sense? Such a nice formula, isn't it? You know what this also tells you? It's really cool. If we switch a and b, if we switch a and b, some people may expect to get the same result, but that's not the case because you get cube root of b squared a. Of course, if a and b are equal, these results are going to be the same, but then do you really need it? Well, probably not, but this kind of generalizes it. So let's say you had something like this. You could even use the same formula, but you would just set a equals b. So like cube root of a squared times a, that would be the cube root of a cubed, which is a, which is the result for this type of expression. You see, this formula is very comprehensive. Now, let me tell you something before we finish this video. If you had the plus sign instead of the time symbol, guess what? This would give you a quartic equation and which would not be very easy to solve unless you have a very specific nice case. So this one would be much more complicated. Let's go ahead and check now what Wolfram Alpha has to offer for this type of problem. Ta-da! Wolfram Alpha says it doesn't understand your query. Too bad it's the shortcoming of large language models. I try to avoid saying AI, but even AI has a lot of issues, okay? Still. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.